Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I went to the grocery store and spent about $50 on groceries for this meal plan. And I really took advantage of all of the sales for holiday food items. So that means this week I'm going to be using a whole turkey and a lot of the sides that normally I would make for Thanksgiving or any holiday meal. So if you don't want to go shopping for this meal plan, you might already have a lot of these things in your house from your holiday get together. So first let's head to the store and get shopping. And here's my list today. I'm gonna to try not to go over $60. I do have this meal planner down below in the description if you wanna check this out too. So first thing I'm gonna get is some pho noodles. I'm hoping to make some soup with them this week. They're only $1.25. And these ones are made with rice, uh, brown rice. So they're a little bit different than um, other pho noodles I've seen before. They have whole turkeys for $1.27 a pound. These are the Butterball brand, but I am gonna be looking at possibly getting this bone-in turkey breast for $1.99 a pound. Just gonna see uh, which one ends up being less. I did find a nice small turkey. Uh, this is 11.58 pounds. So this would be a tiny bit less expensive than the turkey breast. So now I'm at odds here um, because this one obviously is gonna be, you know, a lot more meat. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just go with a small whole turkey instead of the turkey breast. Oh my gosh, I'm so conflicted. I think I'm gonna have to go with this though. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna be getting two dozen eggs. These are $1.29 a dozen, so I'm gonna get two dozen today. Next, I'll get a half a gallon of milk for $1.95. I'm just gonna get the 2% today. Butter is on sale today for $2.99, so we'll get some unsalted butter today. Then I'll be getting a five pound bag of flour. It's on sale for $1.99 right now. Then we're gonna get two boxes of the turkey stuffing here for 75 cents each. Next, I'm gonna grab one three pack here of the instant fast acting yeast for 79 cents. Then we'll get one container of mayonnaise for $3.09. We like this one here that has the olive oil in it. Their prices are really great on canned goods right now. 49 cents for green beans, for corn. Uh, let's see, we've got sweet peas too for 49 cents and just all kinds of really great deals right now because they did reduce prices on a lot of food for the holidays right now. So I'm going to be getting three cans of whole corn. Again, these are 49 cents each. Next, I'm gonna get some sliced cheese. I wanna get a couple different kinds of cheese. I'm making a few different sandwiches this week. So I'm thinking maybe cheddar cheese and possibly Swiss or provolone. Normally I would get the pound of cheese for $3.79, but since I wanna get a couple different kinds of cheese today, that's why I am getting the sliced cheese for $1.99. Okay, let's go with sharp cheddar and provolone today. I'm probably going to be making my own pie crust today, or this week, I should say. But they do have these pie crusts for $1.79. It comes with two, and so that's a really good deal. It's on sale from $2.49. So if you don't want to make your own crust, this may be worth um, the little extra cost in the budget because it is a really great price today. So we lucked out today. The 10-pound bag of potatoes is $3.55. We're definitely going to grab one of those today. Okay. There's a little bit of room for the potatoes. <laughs> Onions are also a really great price, $1.89 for the two pounds of sweet onions and $1.79 for three pounds of the yellow onions. So I think I'll be getting a bag of yellow onions today for $1.70. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. Next, we'll get some garlic for $1.77. Then let's get one bag of fresh cranberries for 99 cents. These are 12 ounces. Cilantro is on sale for 33 cents, so I'll get a bunch of cilantro. Next, I'll get a bunch of celery for $1.19. I want to buy two pounds of carrots. They're usually about $2 here, but all I see is baby carrots. So if you're gonna be following this meal plan, just pick up two pounds of carrots as well. And the only reason I'm not getting those baby carrots is because I do have some carrots in my refrigerator at home. So I can just use those, but just add $2 if you're shopping at home with me. And I wanted to look for a single orange. They don't have any. So I'm just gonna get a couple limes for 15 cents each today. Next, I'll get one bag of the mixed veggies here in the freezer section for 87 cents. And one bag of peas for 95 cents. The last thing I'm gonna get is some whole cloves. These are 89 cents. 
and this is for about um, a quarter of an ounce. So there may be a better deal um, by getting the larger container, but this is what I'm gonna get today. My cart is very full. Let's go see what the total is. And here's what everything looks like. And our total is $51.10 today. The first thing that I'm gonna do when I get home is to take my turkey and put it in the refrigerator. It's gonna take a couple of days to thaw. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be making a couple of loaves of bread to use for all my recipes this week. These are two hour no need bread loaves. So it's really not gonna take that long to make these. I just measure out my flour in a bowl and add some salt, a packet of instant yeast, and about a teaspoon of honey. If you don't have honey, you can just use sugar, but I definitely prefer the honey. Give that a good mix until everything is well combined. Then I'll add one and a half cups of warm water at about 110 degrees Fahrenheit just to make sure that it activates the yeast properly. I'll give that a mix until everything is nice and combined and I don't really see a whole lot of flour streaks left. It's going to be a shaggy dough that's okay. Then I'll cover it with my reusable beeswax wraps but you can use plastic wrap. Then I'll just set that aside for about an hour or until it doubles in size. It's going to look something like this. You're going to see a few bubbles on the top. That's perfect. Then I'm going to flour a surface. You can just use your counter or a cutting board or something like that and turn the dough out onto that floured surface. Now it is going to be pretty sticky if you've done it correctly and that's okay. Just get a lot of flour on your hands and dust the flour on the top of the dough as well. That's going to help. We're going to put a couple of pieces of parchment too in front of us so we have somewhere to place the dough and I'm just going to pull up the edges so that way it just forms a little bit more of a ball shape. It's going to be really kind of wonky looking. That's okay. It's going to turn out fine either way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'll flip it upside down onto the parchment paper and I'm going to do the same thing with the other loaf that I started as well. I started them at the same time so that way it's super easy. The oven already heating and everything so it's not a big deal it doesn't take any extra time while I'm doing this I did put the Dutch oven and a loaf pan into a cold oven and turn it on at 425 degrees to heat that up and I'm just gonna cover those dough balls just so that way they don't form a skin or anything while the oven is heating then I'm gonna carefully remove that Dutch oven with the lid I'm gonna take that off and carefully put my dough in with the parchment and cover that up and with the loaf pan I just put that right in in there and covered it with some foil it just needs to cover so it doesn't burn the top for the first 30 minutes or so so just be really careful when you put this on because it will be really hot get that in the oven for about 30 minutes then after 30 minutes we're going to take the lid off and the foil off and then I'll place that back in the oven and let it cook for about 10 minutes more now if you like a really crusty bread you can let it cook for another 15 minutes but I like mine on the softer side so 10 minutes is usually perfect for me now when we take it out we're going to put it directly on a cooling rack straight out of the Dutch oven. Again, just be careful when you remove it and you have to let it cool at least 20 minutes before slicing to make sure that it cooks properly all the way through. Now with the one that's just a loaf, I'm just going to slice that like a normal loaf of bread and it comes out beautifully. And I actually advise doing two loaves if you can. It just depends on what you have on hand, but the other one works just fine. Instead of slicing it in one really large piece, I actually like to take that one and slice it in half first and then slice in into smaller slices as well. So I get something that's a little bit easier to pop in a toaster or to brown in a skillet. It's just a little bit smaller and easier to work with, but that's totally up to you as well. And they turned out really great. They're gonna be really delicious. And we have another packet of yeast in case we need to make more bread too. Now, once my turkey is thawed, I'm gonna go ahead and make our first dinner and it's gonna be all of the turkey and plenty of the sides for the entire week. So let's get started on this. I'm just gonna take out my turkey and remove the giblets and the neck and I'm going to pat everything as dry as I can on the outside. That's just gonna help everything stick and just make sure that the seasonings don't really go anywhere when we're cooking. Now you can save the giblets and everything. You can use them to help make your stock later or cook them up and put them in your stuffing, whatever you wanna do with them is fine. I personally did not use them in any of these recipes, but you definitely can if you like. Now in a small container, I mixed together some avocado oil and some salt and pepper. You can use any oil that you have on hand. It doesn't make a huge difference, but an oil that's a neutral oil that has a high smoking point is recommended because we are baking this at a pretty high temp. And we'll just spread that oil salt and pepper mixture all over the skin on all the parts of the turkey that we can see. Then we'll add the aromatics into the cavity. I'm just using 
using a half of an onion, a half a lime, or if you have a lemon, that would work too, and then half of a bulb of garlic that I just chopped the end off. I did not take the outside layer of the garlic off. I just left that on the skins and all, and that's perfectly fine. Then I grabbed my melted butter and put that all over the skin. This is extremely important. This is what's gonna make crispy skin and make everything tender on the breasts because we're gonna go ahead and put some of that butter underneath the skin as well. Just make sure you really get in there and get that butter underneath in between the skin and the breasts. That will make a huge difference in how moist the turkey breasts end up after they're nice and cooked. So it's gonna take a little bit of effort here, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. And then we're gonna go ahead and tuck the wings underneath the turkey on the top side so they don't burn. And if you have kitchen string, you can use that for the legs or you can just put that back in the skin. If it has a little bit of extra skin there, you'll see you'll be able to just tuck that in there. Then we're gonna put that in the oven at 475 degrees for about 45 minutes. And this is just to get the skin nice and crispy. Once that's done, we'll take it out and carefully get some foil and cover it with a little foil tent. I like to wrinkle up the foil a little bit just to keep it from flying all over the place when it goes back in the oven. I just feel like it helps it kind of stay in place a little bit better. And I'm just putting it on top. I wanna to make sure that it's not actually touching the turkey itself. I'm just giving it some room on all sides, but trying to cover it as much as possible so that way it can get really nice and steamed in there and it's not gonna burn any of the parts of the skin that are possibly showing. And that's why we use the tent there because it's gonna go in for at least another hour and a half and I'm going to reduce the temp of the oven here at 350 so that way it doesn't burn. We don't wanna keep it at 475 the whole time. So this one only took about an hour and a half after that. It could take up to three and a half hours. So just make sure that you temp it in the thickest part of the turkey to make sure that it's 165 degrees. Then when you take it out, just make sure you let it rest for at least 20 minutes before you start carving it. You can let it rest longer than that if you like. It really is a beautiful turkey and it tastes really delicious and it's super simple, very few ingredients. I think you're gonna love this one. After everything is cooled, then we're going to go ahead and save all those drippings. We're gonna have quite a bit because we had three and a half cups of water underneath. So just pour that into a container. You'll see the fat rise to the top and you're just gonna skim that fat off the top there and set it aside. You can use that fat for cooking later instead of butter or oil. Just refrigerate it. It'll last about three to five days and you can just use that when you saute things just about a tablespoon at a time or so. So that is a great way to use the fat later and also strain those drippings so that way you have that nice clear liquid for later. We're going to use that for gravy and all kinds of fun things so make sure you save that in the fridge. Next we're going to be making a homemade cranberry sauce. It's super easy. To a medium pot I'm just adding one cup of water and a cup of sugar. You can use less sugar or a sugar substitute whatever works for you or I've heard people use orange juice instead and if you had an orange you could use the zest of the orange as well. You could add zest of lime if you like. Then once that's boiling we'll reduce the heat to low and carefully add our cranberries and give that a good stir. They're going to pop as they cook so you're going to hear that and just stir and cook for about 10 minutes or so until a lot of the cranberries are popped and you're going to see everything turn this beautiful consistency and after that you're just going to remove that off the heat and let it cool a little bit so that way you can get it into a container and then refrigerate it and that will last up to three days in the refrigerator. You can freeze this as well in smaller portions to use for later. It freezes really nicely so you can go ahead and give that a go. And you can also mash those cranberries if you don't want as many thick pieces but I thought it turned out just beautiful just like this and we're going to save this for a lot of recipes for the rest of the week as well. This next recipe is the mashed potatoes and it's very simple and you really can judge this up any way that you like. First I start by washing the five pounds of russet potatoes and giving them a peel and then chopping them and adding them to a large pot. Then I cover that with cold water until the potatoes are completely covered at least one or two inches over the potatoes. Then I'm going to put that on the stove and get that to a boil and boil that for about 12 to 15 minutes. Don't forget to add the salt. The salt is extremely important. So salt it to taste. It does make a huge difference in how everything turns out. Then save your potato skins for later. You can add those to your broth and make a really yummy turkey broth with those veggie scraps. So save all your veggie scraps, potato skins, onion skins, carrot skins, all that jazz. So you'll see that once they're boiling, they're going to sort of fall apart when you poke them. That's perfect. Go ahead and strain those and add them back to the pot and put it on high and just let some of that moisture come out. 
just for a minute or so, give it a good shake, and then turn the heat off. Now give everything a really good mash, and then we're gonna add our butter and milk. Now this is the part that's really up to you. I personally only added about a quarter cup of butter and somewhere between half a cup and one cup of milk. Now it's really gonna depend on how creamy you'd like your potatoes and how rich you like them. So if you'd like, you can add as much butter as your heart pleases and just really go with it and just keep mashing until the consistency looks good and then season with salt and pepper and just give it a taste and see if it's what you love. And if not, then you can just keep adding things, add a little bit more milk, add a little more butter, a little more seasoning, and just get it perfect because it's going to make a big difference for the rest of the week as we're going to be using these mashed potatoes in a ton of recipes. As a side dish with my first dinner here, I went ahead and just made some baked carrots. I just slice the carrots on an angle and then add some oil and toss them with salt and pepper. And then I'm just going to put them on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them at 425 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. And that's it for this one. You definitely don't have to do this side dish. You can do any kind of veggie that you like. You can even just do some frozen broccoli or get a salad or do whatever it is that you love. Whatever's in the fridge is fine. But I just wanted to add a little bit of baked carrots, so that's what I did. Next, we're gonna be making some homemade gravy. And we're gonna be using some of those drippings from earlier from when we cooked the turkey. So make sure you have those on hand. So to a medium pot, I added half a cup of butter and half of a cup of flour and gave that a good whisk and I'm going to let that cook until it gets a little bit browned because we want to cook out all of the flour flavor just to make sure that doesn't hang on in the gravy for later so that's a really important step give it a few minutes until it's nice and golden then I'm going to add some of those drippings I added about a half a cup of drippings or so but you can add as much as you like and then I added three and a half cups of water or you can use turkey broth or chicken broth whatever you have on hand but since we didn't pick any up or haven't made any yet, we're just going to use water for this part of it. And we're going to make sure that we add that just a little bit at a time so that way we don't get any lumps in our gravy. That makes a big difference here, making sure that we're patient and that we incorporate all of the liquid a little bit at a time to make sure it's the right consistency. Then we'll add some salt and pepper, give it a taste and season it some more if needed. Give that a whisk and heat it through and then we can add it to our mashed potatoes and our turkey for our first dinner and save the rest of that in the refrigerator for some meals later this week. This next recipe is a very simple potato pancake recipe. We usually eat these for breakfast and I highly recommend giving them a try. I'm gonna show you the very basic version, but I'm gonna tell you some of the add-ins you can make as well to really zhuzh this up. So I'm just gonna add to a bowl a couple of cups of mashed potatoes, about two or so, quarter cup of flour, one or two eggs, and some salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna give that a good mix until it's really nice and combined. And then I'm going to heat some oil or butter in a large pan. And once that's heated, we're gonna do this just like pancakes. So make sure it's hot when you add that and just add a couple of tablespoons, as much as you like really at a time, to the pan, just like you would for pancakes. And we're just going to flatten it a little bit so that way it has a little bit of a better cooking surface. And then flip it after it's golden brown and then you're gonna brown it on the other side. Once they're brown on both sides, we just serve them with some sour cream or Greek yogurt and some shredded cheese. It's absolutely delicious for breakfast. Some add-ins you could do are onions, shredded cheese, chives. You could really add anything you like. Next, I'm just gonna cook up one of those boxes of the stuffing that we picked up. We're just gonna follow the directions on the package exactly word for word. So just add the butter and the water, bring it to a boil. Then we're just gonna stir in the stuffing mix and just make sure it's completely combined. Then turn off the heat, add the lid and let it sit for five minutes. That's it for that one, so easy. And the first breakfast that I wanna make with that is a turkey breakfast hash. It's a little bit spicy, so you can really make this however you like, but I'm gonna tell you how I made it and then you can make adjustments if you don't like spicy. So to a large pan, I added some butter and then sauteed some onions in the butter until they were nice and soft and translucent. Then I added the chopped turkey and some minced garlic and seasoned with salt, pepper, chili powder, paprika, and cumin. Gave that a good stir and continued cooking until everything was nice and heated through. Then I just stirred in the stuffing and some gravy. I added about three quarters of a cup of gravy to this. You can really add as much or as little as you like. It really makes a difference though in the the texture. So if you want it to be more moist, add a little bit more gravy. If you want it on the drier side, definitely add less gravy. So just 
look at the consistency and maybe add a little bit more as needed. Now I'm going to be frying some eggs too in a separate pan and I'm recommending about two fried eggs per serving here. So just put that in a bowl and top it with fried egg and enjoy. This next breakfast idea is an egg and turkey breakfast sandwich and it's going to be an interesting sort of recipe here so stick with me. So first I'm going to add the mashed potatoes and stuffing to a bowl and mix that together until it's combined. You may need to add a little bit more mashed potatoes depending on how well it sticks together. Then we're going to be making some little patties out of these because we are going to be frying them in a pan to make sure that they're a nice little patty to go on our sandwich. So they should look something like this. And I'm just making two portions, but of course I wrote, wrote the recipe for four portions. So when you're looking at that, you'll know to make four. Then in a large pan, I'm heating some oil. You can use butter if you like, whatever you have on hand is fine. Then I'll add those patties to it, brown on one side, then flip and brown on the other. After I flipped the patties, I added my turkey around the patties just to get the turkey nice and warm through. And once everything was browned and the turkey was hot, I added those patties to my bread, which I toasted, but you could toast them in a toaster or in the pan, whatever you like, however you like to have your bread toasted. Then I topped that with the turkey and to get everything to stick together really nicely, I added the slice of cheese on top. I used provolone, but you can use cheddar or whatever you like. And then I fried up the eggs separately to the doneness that I like for yolks. I like my yolks runny, but you can definitely make them more over hard or over easy. Season with salt and pepper, add that to the top, and then just put your other piece of bread on it, and that's it. Super easy. Doesn't take very much time at all, but it was really delicious, and that runny yolk really makes a huge difference. Of course, you can add any condiments you want on this, so the sky's the limit. Add all the flavors that you like to this, and really enjoy your crazy breakfast sandwich. Next, we're going to be making one of my favorites, a turkey melt. So basic, but so delicious. So in a large pan, I'm just going to add my turkey and heat that on medium until it's cooked through. Then I'll remove that and set it aside. And then to that same pan, I'm going to add some butter until it's melted. We're just going to warm it up on medium or so. Then I'll place the bread in the pan and top one side with cheese and that turkey that we just warmed. Then I'll top it with some more cheese. This is what really keeps everything together and really adds all that nice flavor and cheesiness. And then top it with the other slice of bread. Now we're going to just brown that on the one side and then turn it over and brown it on the other. But I like to make sure I press the sandwich down as it cooks just to make sure it gets really nice and melty. And then we'll just serve that up maybe with some mayo. It's so delicious. This next sandwich idea is a turkey stuffing and cranberry sandwich and only uses a couple of ingredients. First, I toasted my bread and heated my stuffing in the microwave. Then I just added some mayonnaise to one side of the bread and added my turkey that I I liked it cold but you can warm it if you like then I top that with the stuffing and some cranberry sauce and you can add more mayonnaise or any other condiments that you have on hand if you like and add as much or as little cranberry sauce as you like and then just top it with the other piece of bread and that's it for this one so fast this next recipe is similar to a turkey shepherd's pie. I'm not sure what they call it for shepherd's pie with turkey. So you can let me know what that is called in the comments because I was not able to find the answer. And first for the recipe, I preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and greased an eight by 11 casserole dish with a little bit of butter and set that aside. Then I heated my two cups of mashed potatoes in the microwave. That's just gonna help to spread them later. So that's why I did that, but you don't have to. And then shredded some carrots. Now the fun part, it's gonna be very easy from this point forward. We're just going to add our turkey to the bottom of that greased casserole dish and just make sure all the layers are pretty evenly spread throughout so we make sure that we get everything in every single bite. And we're going to top that with our gravy and just spread that all over so again we have a nice even layer of gravy. After that gravy is nice and spread evenly, we're going to add our shredded carrots and then on top of that we'll add our stuffing. And I didn't heat the stuffing or anything like that. Everything is cold except for the mashed potatoes. On top of the stuffing, I added a can of corn and about a cup of frozen peas and then a little bit of salt and pepper. Now you can add some sage or any seasonings that you have on hand. I definitely recommend seasoning this really well. It's going to make a difference in how that turns out. So just make sure you do your salt, your pepper, any sage, any kind of seasonings that you love after you've added your peas. Then we're going to top that with the potatoes and spread that evenly until it's fully covered. It's important. We want to make sure it kind of steams everything 
everything on the inside. So just make sure that those potatoes spread really nicely over all of the ingredients. Then we're just going to bake that at 350 degrees for about 45 to 55 minutes until those potatoes are nice and golden brown and everything is really nice and bubbly. If you let it rest for a couple of minutes after it comes out, then it will be easier to serve, but you definitely don't have to. You can just serve this right up and top it with anything you like and enjoy. This next recipe is still my number one favorite thing to do with Thanksgiving leftovers. I call it my favorite leftover turkey casserole. So in a large pan, I'm gonna heat some butter over medium heat and let that melt. Then I'll add my onions, carrots, and celery, and just cook those through until they're nice and soft and translucent. This is is going to take about five minutes or so and then I'm going to season those with a little bit of salt and pepper and add in my cooked turkey some minced garlic about a can of corn and a cup of peas and these are frozen peas you can use anything you have on hand though when you make this and just give that a good stir and of course we have to add some gravy that's really important I only use about a half a cup two three quarters of a cup of gravy but you can add as much or as little as you like but it really makes a huge difference in the flavor give that a good stir and then we're going to season again with salt and pepper and then we'll just stir and continue to cook until everything is heated through and bubbly it's very important that everything gets really nice and heated it's not going to spend as much time in the oven as our last recipe so that's very important now we're going to top this with mashed potatoes and again if you like it to spread a little more easily you can pop those in the microwave for a minute or two before you spread them on top and just make sure again that you're covering the ingredients in a nice layer so that way everything underneath is going to get nice and steamed because the potatoes are going to create sort of a crust on top so that's why that's so important to spread it nice and evenly over all of the ingredients then we're going to pop that in the oven at 375 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes until everything is golden brown and the filling is nice and bubbly and then just serve that on up and it's so delicious i really hope that you try this one out of all the recipes that i'm showing you today please try this one and let me know what you think because i adore this one it's my absolute favorite this next recipe is a turkey pot pie and I use a very similar recipe for when I make my chicken pot pie so that's what I'm doing here. Now I do have gold potatoes this time. I have plenty of russets left over. I just decided to use my gold potatoes because those were going to go bad first. So I chopped those, added them to a pot, topped those with some frozen veggies and some of my leftover turkey and then topped that with water and put it on the stove to boil for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the potatoes were cooked through. Now in the meantime in a large saucepan I'm going to melt some butter and then cook my onions in the butter until they're nice and soft and translucent. Then I'm going to stir in the flour, some salt, pepper, and poultry seasoning to form a paste. And I'm going to cook that for a couple of minutes just to make sure that flour gets a little bit browned. And then I'll slowly stir in my broth. Now I just mixed together some water and turkey drippings in this case, but you can use broth if you've already made it. But this is just super easy if you just add the water and the turkey drippings. Just add it a little bit at a time so that way we can make sure we whisk it together and we don't get any lumps in our filling, similar to when we made the gravy. So just make sure you're only adding about a half a cup of liquid at a time then we're going to do the same thing with the milk just adding a little bit at a time and stirring in between to make sure it gets fully incorporated then we're just going to continue stirring that and bringing that to a simmer and we're going to let that simmer stirring occasionally until it's nice and thick just a couple of minutes or so then we're going to stir in that mixture that we strained and just set that aside because we're going to make our pie crust this time although I never make my pie crust I just wanted to show you that you can if you have your flour and your butter and a little bit of water I'm going to link the recipe it's not my recipe but I'm going to link it in the blog post for you if you want to try your hand at making your own crust crust. Some people are really, really good at making pie crust. I am not one of those people. So I personally think spending $1.79 on a couple of pie crusts is totally worth it. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely do that. Or if you want to try your hand at making it from scratch, you can do that too. Both ways work just fine. Now, if you're buying the pre-made crusts, just make sure that you have those out while you're making the fillings. So that way they're slightly thawed out by the time you fill them and they're not frozen when you do that. So you can see I'm laying over my pie crust here. I I don't have a pie dish. I've never owned one. I probably should get one, but I just put it in a cake pan and it worked out just fine. So if that's what you have on hand, you can do that. You can use a casserole dish too. It doesn't matter. Just put your pie crust down on the bottom, add the filling, and then put the other crust on top and just seal it and make sure that 
everything is sealed except for a couple of slits that you put in the middle to allow steam to escape. After we've got the pie crusts all situated, and I promise they're not that hard to work with, once you get the hang of it, you can just use your little roller there to get them on top. Or if you bought the pre-made ones, it's super simple, and you just cut away the excess. You can even make fun shapes to put on top out of the excess. I usually do that, but I didn't know how this crust was going to work out, and that's why I didn't do it. But anywho, we're just going to bake this at 375 degrees for about 45 to 60 minutes until it's nice and golden brown and bubbly on the inside and then let it rest for about 10 minutes before you slice into it and serve it and enjoy and this one is a great freezer meal I put a few notes in the blog post for you if you'd like to do that instead next I'm going to be making a mixture between turkey pho and turkey noodle soup so I'm just going to add those bones and skin to a pot and top those with a few of the scraps that I had I'm just going to use a couple of them just some of the carrot scraps and onion scraps and I did add some celery scraps too covered that with water and then brought that to a boil and just partially cover it and let it simmer. I'm going to let it simmer for about two hours, but you could just do 45 minutes. That's fine. And then about 20 minutes before we're ready to strain this, we're going to add in the cloves, some ginger, and a cinnamon stick. Those are all completely optional. I'm making it more like a pho and you can make it more like a turkey noodle soup, whatever you like. And then meanwhile, in a pot, I'm going to saute my onions, carrots, and celery in a little bit of butter until they're nice and soft and translucent. Then I'll add in my cooked turkey, the turkey broth that I just made and strained on top. And just make sure you remove those large bones and things before you attempt to strain the broth because you don't wanna hurt yourself. So just make sure you remove those with tongs first so they're not falling all over the place and burning anybody. So once that broth is in there, I'm adding a little bit of sugar because again, I'm making this like pho. If you don't wanna make it like that, you don't have to add the sugar and a little bit of salt. Gave that a stir, brought it to a simmer. And meanwhile, I cooked the noodles in a separate pot, added those to bowls with some cilantro, green onions, and the turkey and some veggies, topped it with the broth and served it and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed all the recipes and at least got some inspiration for things to make in your home. Please be sure to give me a little thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. It helps my channel a ton. And of course, subscribe to see more meal plans and lots of recipes. I hope you have a wonderful day.